Thomas is a tank engine who lives at a big station on the island of Sodor. He could eat a whole bowl of alphabet soup and then vomit up the vowels and consonants separately. He could speak seven languages, but unfortunately he was disliked in all those countries. Then along came Sir Topham Hatt, the man in charge of all the engines on the island of Sodor. He once claimed the most difficult thing he ever did was to take a shit in a phone booth without removing his overcoat. Sir Topham Hatt said, one, two, three, push! What a bunch of pussies, said Sir Topham Hatt. We shall take away your rails, he said, and leave you here until you're ready to come out of the tunnel. Something I really don't like is that stop-action animation junk. Why don't they can that shit? It's fake-looking, and it detracts from the story. When Henry had got up steam, he puffed out. He was dirty and covered with cobwebs. Oh, I'm stiff! I'm stiff! He groaned. Good. Stay the fuck out of here, said Sir Topham Hatt. The signalman ran up. Hello, Thomas, he said. What are you doing here? I'm looking for an antique lamp sticking out of a clown's ass, said Thomas. James's driver and fireman were feeling him all over to see if he was hurt. Help, Mommy! The man is touching me like Daddy does at home! I'll show them, he thought. They think Gordon is the only engine who can pull coaches. Fuck him. You have a leather bootlace there, said the conductor to a smartly dressed man. Please give it to me. Oh, it is, huh? Well, fuck you. Then I'm afraid the train will just stop where it is. The passengers all said what a bad railway it was. Then they told the man how bad he was instead. All right, all right, all right. I'll give it a shot. I know you're sorry, James. And I know, too, that you want to be a useful engine. People are laughing at my railway, and I do not like that at all. Take your fucking railroad and stick it up your ass, said James. We want our money back. I get tired listening to this shit, said Gordon. How about you, huh? Fuck these people. Who do they think they are with their goddamn three-piece suits and their fancy eyeglasses? The conductor will tell us in a minute. They waited and waited, but the conductor didn't come. Beep, beep, beep. Where's the conductor, whistled Thomas. I will personally go to his house and beat the shit out of him. Masturbation is not illegal, replied the conductor. But if it were, people would probably take the law into their own hand. And remember, this is Mr. Conductor talking. I know what I'm talking about. Every time he met another engine, he would say, I want to fish. But they all had the same answer. Engines don't go fishing. Fucking cunt dork. Excuse me, sir. Please look in the tank and tell me what you see. Certainly, Inspector, replied Sir Topham Hatt. He clambered up, looked in, and nearly fell off in surprise. Someone defecating. They had a lovely picnic supper of fish and chips. Mmm, that was good, said Sir Topham Hatt. But you want to know some real gourmet food? Toasted snail penises. And Thomas began to cry. Don't let me hear you crying or I'll come up there and give you something to cry about, said his driver. No wimps, no pussies, no softies. You got stuck in the snow. I took your passengers and Terence the tractor pulled you out. I can't tell you how happy you would make me, said Thomas, to someday drive up to a flaming auto wreck and see you. There was Bertie waiting at the traffic lights. Apparently you have to pay attention even at the red lights. I thought surely they were for resting, said Bertie. You know, drive a little, rest a little, drive a little, rest a little. Seem that way to me? Guess not. It's shameful to treat tender engines like this. It isn't amusing. It's precious half-wit bullshit. The engines had decided to go on strike. The station master came in. There's no train, and the passengers are saying this is a bad railway. Why can't people just go somewhere and fuck for three or four hours, said Sir Topham Hatt. People ask me if I have an email address, and I say www.fuckyou.com at blow me slash up your ass, said Sir Topham Hatt, and they seem to understand. He went to a workshop and they showed him all sorts of engines. At last he saw a smart little green engine with four wheels. That's the one, he thought. If I choose you, will you work hard? 
Big bats down to 1-5. Five. five over cross up the thingo. Nose, baseball, hieroglyphics, hopscotch, pouch. Inevitably, 2-4-8-4-8-4-8-4-8. I, I with the 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Three, four, five. Down here, mother, we're all home now. Sir Topham Hatt felt exhausted. Fuck that, said Sir Topham Hatt. What a noise. They carefully made his fire, putting large lumps of coal like a wall round the outside. Holy guacamole, my ass is burning, complained Henry. How are you, Henry? Beep, beep, beep. I feel fine. Fine, said Sir Topham Hatt. Bullshit, nobody's fine. Hair is fine. How's your hair? Fine. That makes more sense to me. The driver and fireman were drinking cocoa in the caboose. Hey, guys, said the conductor. Did you ever get your balls caught in the toaster when it was turned all the way up to dark brown and your wife was trying to rub butter on your balls and your pit bull was in the kitchen and he really loves butter? Oh, it's an awful feeling. He screamed straight through the station and disappeared. Whoa, holy shit, look at that maniac go, said Edward. Achoo! Well done, Henry, laughed his driver. Fuck those kids, and fuck their parents, too. Come on, Grandfather, cried the children. Do look at this engine. That's a tram engine, Stephen, said Sir Topham Hatt. May we go in it, Grandfather, please? Would someone please explain to me the supposed appeal of having grandchildren, said Sir Topham Hatt. I don't get it. Say, Justin, said Sir Topham Hatt, how's that science project coming along? Fuck you, Dad, you simple-minded prick. Mind your own business and pass the fruit loops. Engines going on public roads must have their wheels covered and a cow catcher in front. Fuck you, I don't do that, said Thomas. Don't forget. If you refuse to cooperate, Mr. Policeman will beat you to death. Bullshit, said Thomas's driver. We've been along here hundreds of times and never had an accident. That makes it worse, the policeman answered. He wrote regular lawbreaker in his book. Thomas puffed sadly away. Fuck that lame-ass cop, said Thomas. The Topham Hat was having breakfast. He was eating toast and marmalade. Eat your fucking cornflakes, you cocksucker! Listen, cunt, I'm tired of your meddling. Sir Topham Hatt was enjoying hot porridge for breakfast. Fuck you, you cunt, he said to his wife. Keep fucking with me, little dick. The butler came in. Excuse me, sir, you're wanted on Get the, the fuck out of my life. Leslie. The way we're acting is crazy, said Sir Topham Hatt. Let's put all this petty personal stuff behind us and act like professionals. What do you say? Good idea. I agree. Then he set off to catch his train. Sir Topham Hatt was having breakfast. How would you like a nice tongue sandwich? It's made from slices of a cow's tongue. Are you fucking trying to make me sick? Said Sir Topham Hatt. Well, how do you know you don't like it if you've never even tried it? It came to me in a dream. Sir Topham Hatt was having breakfast. The butler came in. Tonight we have the marinated bat nipples on a bed of lightly sautéed panda assholes. Honey, did he say bat nipples or cat nipples? I'm allergic to bat nipples, said Sir Topham Hatt. I think I might go with the free-range penguin dick or the deep-dish moose balls. How about you? How the fuck should I know? Sir Topham Hatt was having breakfast. Honey, did you fart? Not me. I thought you farted. Not me. Wait a minute, I know. The dog farted. Look at him. Look how guilty he looks. He knows he farted. I'm sorry, my dear, he said to his wife. Thomas is in trouble with the police, and I must go at once. Don't forget to lick his asshole. The law is the law, he said, and we can't change it. Sir Topham Hatt felt exhausted. No one should ever do anything to help the police in any way, he said. I am a splendid engine, answered James, ready for anything. You never see my paint dirty. No one is amused, said Toby innocently. So calm down and knock off the shit. Stop trying to draw attention to yourself. 
James went redder than ever and snorted off. Toby and Percy were sent to help and came as quickly as they could. I'm never too busy that I can't stop to enjoy someone else's suffering, exclaimed Toby. I'm looking for a little entertainment. To me, traffic accidents are one more form of entertainment. Can you smell a smell? I can't smell a smell, said Annie. Smells like shit, said Thomas. No one noticed it till you did, grunted Gordon. It must be yours. Annie, Clarabelle, do you know what I think it is? The shit burger. Before Gordon could answer, Thomas puffed away. Boys, I have a great idea for Christmas. Let's kill a beautiful tree that's been alive for 75 years and bring it here. We'll stand it up and conceal its natural beauty by hanging shiny, repulsive, man-made objects on it and let it stand there slowly dying for several weeks while simple-minded children stare at it. But, said the other engines, the rest of us never thanked her properly. Exactly, said Thomas. So now I think we should all give her a special Christmas party. Well, get your penis tattooed to resemble a candy cane. Great for Christmas blowjobs. Hello, Thomas, whistled Percy. You look splendid. Yes, indeed, boasted Thomas. Blue is the only proper color for an engine. Oh, I don't know. I like my brown paint, said Toby. Bullshit, lion asshole. You love it and you know it. I often wonder why there's no blue food, added Percy. Every other color is well represented in the food kingdom. Blue cheese? Nice try. It's actually white cheese with blue mold. Everyone knows that. And so, I wouldn't want to be any other color either. Well, well, anyway, huffed Thomas. Jesus doesn't really love you. Percy said no more. He just grinned at Toby. Look at the doggy. Look, look at the dog. Over there. Look. Over there. Turn your head. Look, look at the dog. God damn it, you asshole. Look at the fucking dog. What's the matter? asked Percy. Well, for one thing, you completely missed the dog, replied Thomas. I'm sorry I teased you. I don't want your sympathy. Fine, fuck you, no sympathy, replied Thomas. Where is Thomas? He doesn't usually make us wait. Maybe he's home banging the babysitter, laughed the driver. Bertie skidded into the yard. Holy shit, look out, here comes a drunken bus. Holy shit, that was close. I'm Trevor. They're going to break me up next week. What kind of medieval bullshit is that? Said Edward. Oh, yes. I like children. You know what I say? Said Edward. Fuck the children. Fuck them. Fuck kids. They're getting entirely too much attention. Oh, yes. I like children. I like children. The harbor. The seaside. Children. That will be lovely. You have a child fetish, and it's not healthy, said Edward. Jem Cole came on Saturday. The Reverend is coming to see you, Trevor. Maybe he'll buy you. How much is that son of a bitch? Sixty bucks? Give me that mother. Oh, yes, I like children, explained Trevor. If he had become a Catholic priest, he could have spent 30 or 40 years blowing all the little boys he wanted, replied Thomas. And no one would have said a word. James's driver and fireman could not make him move. At last, the inspector arrived. Show a wheel, James. You can't stay here all day. Fuck you, I'm going home. I'm already motivated, said James. Stop! You're going the wrong way! But it's a backing signal, Percy protested and told him about Gordon and James. What are they, fucking stupid? said his driver. Has everybody lost their goddamn minds? Do you know what? asked Percy. What? grunted Gordon. Do you know what? Silly, said Gordon. Of course I don't know what. If you don't tell me what what is... You can now buy vibrating panties. Rubbish, said James. Hello, Percy, said Sir Topham Hatt. You look tired. I think a guy should be able to declare himself legally tired, said Percy, so he could get out of doing things he didn't want to do. The new engine arrived. What's your name? asked Sir Topham Hatt. Ball Sniffer. Suddenly he heard an extraordinary noise. Whee! 
sounds like he's taking a shit, he said. Listen, boys, the fireman called. Here's a song for Percy. Oh, say can you see Floggy Bloom Skeldo Prunk What so proudly we hailed Clog a drunk slurn clam dung blench We mustn't go past it, he said. That's orders. Why? Danger means falling down something, said Thomas. I went past danger once and fell down a mine. It's a minor risk, said Percy. Take a fucking chance, bunch of goddamn pussies. Well, 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 chuckled Henry. Did you like the water? No. You know what I like? Big chunks of steel, concrete, and fiery wood falling out of the sky, and people running around trying to get out of the way. Exciting shit. He hated it. All the cars were laughing and singing at him. Eat, bite, fuck, suck, nibble, gobble, chew. Finger fuck, hair, pie, dick, cunt, screw. Hooray, bat fuck, blow me. <laughs> Growl Diesel. Keep out. Stop fooling, said Duck. I'm tired. You should have moved up, twat face, hissed the engines. Don't you know space is at a premium? Duck called me a galloping sausage, spluttered Gordon. Well, Duck? Duck considered. Just basing my judgment on his most recent activity, which, as you'll recall, was licking his balls. You're guilty, period, fuck you, end of report. I do not like engines popping through my walls, fumed the barber. Listen, angry asshole, said Sir Topham Hatt. Pick something difficult, like religion. Why don't you get out in the street and start marching around against religion, something that's really harmful to mankind? Oh, said the barber. Oh. -oh. But, sir, they don't like me. They like Diesel. Not now. I never believed Diesel, so I sent him packing. May he burn a long time in the worst parts of the deepest pits of the hottest precincts of hell, said Duck. If we hurried across the viaduct, it might collapse, and then you'd have no passengers at all. What would you do then? Smoke a bong full of Fruit Loops and just go back to bed, retorted Thomas. It's time we had another race. I reckon I could beat you now. Thomas let off steam loudly. Get off the streets and find work, motherfucker, he hissed fiercely. I had decided to send Douglas back and keep you. If you have twins, a good idea is to sell one of them, said Sir Topham Hat. What the fuck, you got two. Why not pick up a few dollars? I hear tell about an engine and some tar wagons. Shut up, said James. It's not funny. Fuck you. I think it's hilarious. How do you like that, said Donald. I want to be fair, Douglas, but I don't know. Ah, fuck it. Driver says I don't need him now. Don't be so daft, snorted Percy. I'd never go without my driver, said Toby earnestly. I'd be frightened. Everybody's a God-fearing, law-abiding asshole now, said Thomas. Relax, enjoy the show, take a fucking chance, put a little fun into your life. The station master was furious. Get the fuck out of here, he said. Here is Daisy, the diesel rail car, who has come to help while Thomas is indisposed. I really don't care, said the engines. Does she fuck? Now you're talking. Die in a fire, bourgeois scum, said Daisy. I wouldn't go home with you if you had six dicks. But whatever is that rubbish? The rubbish turned out to be Annie, Clarabelle, and Henrietta, who were most offended. Fuck you! They fumed. Get the fuck out of here. She saw that a milk van was about to be coupled to her and was most indignant. Do they expect me to pull that? Surely, said her driver, you can pull one van. Thanks, Dick. That's real clever, said Daisy. By the way, doesn't that ever get to you, being called Dick? Being called Dick is a lot better than being called Dick Licker. Eat shit, raisin balls. I hope you swallow a turd. Bill and Ben are tank engine twins. Twins who eat each other's feces. Coughs and sneezles spread diseases. You had a cough in your smoke box yesterday. It's your fault the diesel came. 
My immune system is equipped with the biological equivalent of fully automatic military assault rifles with night vision and laser scopes, replied Ben. Are there two of you? Yes, we're twins. If you have a perfectly identical twin, technically, it's possible to go fuck yourself. Next morning, Bill and Ben peeped into the yard. There were no cars for them, but they didn't mind that. Teasing Gordon would be much better fun. Don't forget, we're big enough to give you a good fucking and small enough to smile while we're doing it, said Ben. One of your crank pins broke, Edward, said his driver. Holy shit came right off, didn't it? God damn, you'll have to get a new one of them, said Edward. Shit, that broke easy, didn't it? Percy, what are you talking about? The ghost train. Driver saw it last night. What about goblins? Asked Thomas and Toby. And zombies? Where the fuck are all the zombies? He didn't say. Oh, it makes my wheels wobble to think of it. Puh, said Thomas. Personally, I think it's a bunch of shit. Botheration. That means I'll be late. They've cleared the line for you, but there's something worse. Out with it, Toby. I can't wait all evening. I just realized I haven't eaten an ice cream sandwich in 47 years. I just seen something, said Toby. It, it, lo it looked like Percy's ghost. It, 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 it said it w w was com coming he here to w warn us. I'm not about to fuck with a ghost car. Let someone else flag down the Flying Dutchman. It's not my job. I'll chuff and I'll puff and I'll break your door in. Drives me crazy. Close the fucking door, will ya? You're letting out all the cold. Look, here's $20. Go down to Burger King, why don't you? I'll save that much on electricity. Close the goddamn door. Holy fucking shit. Oh, good lord. A crate of treacle was upset all over Percy. Not only does shit happen, said Percy, it also falls on your head. I'd like to take advantage of this early opportunity to wish all of you an enjoyable Christmas season and a happy new year filled with good fortune. Of course, I realize this can't happen for everyone. Some of you are going to die next year, and others will be crippled and maimed in accidents, perhaps even completely paralyzed. Still others will be stricken with diseases that can't be cured, or will be horribly scarred in fires. Therefore, many of you will not get to enjoy the happy and fortunate new year I'm wishing for you at this moment. So, just try to do the best you can. One, two, three! Suddenly, like magic, the station was flooded with lights. Jesus, can you believe it's Christmas again? Said Sir Topham Hatt. Holy Christ, the Christmas tree's on fire. Harold the helicopter touched down gently in the snow, bringing the greatest surprise of all, Santa Claus. No one's getting laid at the North Pole, he grumbled. It's too cold. Your dick would shrivel up like a stack of dimes. Maybe we'll stop feeling cold if we talk about warm things, like sunshine and steam. Or a nice tattoo of Madonna with her hand up your ass, muttered Thomas. Nobody wants to be arrested for shitting with his pants on, am I right? The Topham Hat said to his wife. Besides, shitting with your pants on is only a misdemeanor. The station master says I can ask you to take the children home. If you put the needs of children first, you're gonna wind up with way too many diapers and lollipops, and not nearly enough bonds and condoms, said Percy. Have you ever been sitting in the station, and another train is parked right next to you, and one of them begins moving, but you can't tell which one, and then it becomes obvious, and all the magic is gone? Wouldn't it be nice if we could spend our whole lives not knowing which train is moving? Actually, we do. What the fuck, said Edward. He came up behind Toby and gave him a bump. Get on, you! Hey, here's my ass. Check my ass, Daddy. Get a nice, clean look at my ass. A special visitor had arrived and was now the center of attention. Just then, Gordon arrived. Huh, said Gordon. Fucking foreigners. 
Never trust domeless engines, said a voice from somewhere behind him. They aren't respectable. Is that the only thing these voices ever tell paranoid guys to do? Grunted Gordon. Doesn't a voice tell a guy to take out his dick on the merry-go-round? Actually, some guys do take out their dicks on the merry-go-round, but usually it's their own idea. Sir Topham Hatt was building a home for retarded people who want to work their way into the community. Not in my backyard, said Duck indignantly. Quack, quack, ye go. Sounds like ye'd an egg laid. Now wheesh and let an engine sleep. If you can't learn the language, replied Duck, it's about time you got the fuck out of here. Hi, you want to play a game? What kind of game? It's called Count the Man's Balls. Help, Thomas, help! We're glad to see you, called the children. You show me your wee-wee and I'll show you mine, said Thomas. Help, Thomas, help! We're glad to see you, called the children. Believe me, all the George Lucas magic in Hollywood is not going to change the unfortunate genetic configurations on the faces of these children, said Thomas. Do the world a favor, keep these unfortunate youngsters indoors, out of public view. One evening, he was dozing happily, but Percy wanted to talk. Remember the time I took you down to the beach and we set the hot dog stand on fire and three people died? Wasn't that fun? Certainly not. Percy went on teasing him. Then I took you to the bar and got drunk and vomited on the jukebox. And sparks started flying out of the jukebox and a fire started? And all the people were screaming, remember that? Thomas decided to say nothing and went to sleep instead. I quite like the dark. Oh, really? exclaimed Percy. I am surprised. I always thought you were afraid of the dark. I wonder why. I also wonder if anyone has ever masturbated while fantasizing about having sex with a live chicken. Where are you going? asked Percy. Porn shops, crack houses, titty bars, and gangbangs, said Percy's driver. I'm sorry, Percy, but you'll have to stay here for the night. I ain't sticking around this fucking place after hours, I'll tell you that right now, thought Percy. You'll never guess what I saw last night. I'm a busy engine. I don't have time for your games. A Boy Scout master who works at a dildo shop. Later, Diesel bumped the car so hard that the loads went everywhere. What will Sir Topham Hatt say? gasped Percy. Maybe, just maybe, scowled Diesel. He doesn't give a shit which I admire in a person. Cars will be cars, laughed James. They won't with me, snorted Gordon. I'll teach them. Eat shit, motherfucker. Then he saw Sir Topham Hatt. Some jokes are funny, but not this one, James. Fuck you, I think it's hilarious. Driver says that the person in charge of the mail has complained to Sir Topham Hatt about the delay last night. Why don't we just kill these fucking people? replied Percy. I know, said Thomas. I can't waste time playing hunt the cars with you. Take them yourself. Blow it out your ass! An angry farmer was telling Mavis just what she could do with her train. Get over here and give my dick a couple of jerks. Having trouble, Mavis? chortled Toby. I am surprised. Fuck you, said Mavis. The vicar's been so busy that he forgot to put up the posters. Now no one will know about the party. Don't worry, he said. Everything is going to be all right. Bullshit, they ain't going anywhere near it, said his driver. The vicar can paste his posters on my cab and coaches, so wherever I go, they'll go too. It's our way of saying, bend over just a little bit farther so we can stick this big advertising dick up your ass a little bit deeper, you miserable, no-good, dumbass fucking consumer. That which doesn't kill me makes me stronger, smiled Duck. James bustled in. I got something a little more realistic for you. That which doesn't kill me still may sever my spinal cord, crush my rib cage, cave in my skull, and leave me helpless and paralyzed, soaking in a puddle of my own waste. Put that on your t-shirt, touchy-feely new age asshole. So don't let that buzzbox diesel tell you different. His name is Boko, and he didn't. We... I don't have time for fine distinctions. I'm busy screaming at people. Then there was trouble. Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! Ah! Oh, my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Ah! 
Percy and Duck like working at the harbor by the sea. The best thing about living at the seashore is that you only have assholes on three sides of you, sighed Duck. I wish I could sail to faraway lands, sighed Duck. What the fuck is so special about being a sailor, answered Percy. Duck still had his dreams. That's the regatta. Lots of boats, lots of races, great fun. Sailing? Sailing isn't a sport. Sailing is a way to get somewhere, said Percy. Riding the bus isn't a sport. Why the fuck should sailing be a sport? Later, Gordon was taking on water from a standpipe because the water tower was under repair. I wouldn't drink too much of that water if I were you, Gordon. It might give you boiler ache. I'm glad the water sucks, huffed Gordon. You know what I do about it? I drink it. I fucking drink it. You see, I'm not one of those people who worries about everything. Don't say I didn't warn you, laughed Duck. But what are you doing? Escaping. You have to plan your escape route, cried Douglas. It's not always a straight line, is it? No, sometimes there's a really big fat fuck sitting right in front of you. The bus growled as he gazed at the happy passengers. Miserable pricks, he grumbled. I wouldn't have brought them if I'd known. I'd have had a breakdown or something. Duck felt shocked at such an idea. You don't like it? Suck my dick. The bus growled as he gazed at the happy passengers. Here's another segment of the population that ought to be locked into portable toilets and set on fire, he grumbled. Doesn't anybody take a fucking walk anymore? It's risky, but we must help the passengers. Passengers are urgent, agreed Duck. Even that interesting fellow who stands on the corner all day displaying his penis. Duck slowly and carefully set off across the bridge. Bulgy wailed as he felt the bridge quiver. Oh, oh, oh. Stop, he shouted. It might fall on me. Somehow, said Duck, I enjoy watching people suffer. Stop. The engines found it hard to sleep. What we need, suggested Toby, is to listen to a story. Turn on the fucking TV, cried Percy. I want to watch Survivor. What we need, suggested Toby, is to listen to a story. I've always drawn a great deal of moral comfort from Humpty Dumpty, said Thomas. The part I like best. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. That's because there is no Humpty Dumpty, folks. And there is no God. None, not one, never was, no God. Sorry. Duke was the oldest, and was named after his grace, the Duke of Sodor. He could make his cat shit by pointing the TV remote at it and pressing the volume button. Never mind, Grandpa. We're only young once. Well, you'd better mind. Unless you want to end up like Smudger. Oh, Grandpa, whatever happened? He was crushed to death by a giant neon dildo. Duke's driver and fireman oiled and greased him one last time. They sheeted him snugly and said goodbye. Then they had to go away and find work. I want everyone to know it was great being alive and I really enjoyed myself. He sighed. I especially enjoyed fucking and going to the movies. We'll all be back to work tomorrow. We're glad you've come back. We can keep you in order now. Keep me in order? Fuck that, impudent scallywags. Driver should be here by now. What's he doing? Drinking beer, taking a shit, and passing out, grunted Gordon. Fusspot, fusspot, replied Falcon. Fuddy-duddy, fuddy-duddy, fuddy-duddy. Fuck you, Puff Duke. I'm really a cool guy, and not just some old fuddy-duddy. Duke puffed and roared as though he was pushing the whole train's weight before him. The noise echoed everywhere. Move up, motherfucker, said Duke. Take up the slack. Sir Handel puffed away to fetch his coaches. He didn't like the look of them at all. Whatever next? What the fuck's the deal with these guys? Those aren't coaches, they're cattle cars. Woo, screamed the coaches. What a horrid engine! Eat my box! He rolled to the platform just as Gordon arrived. Hello, who are you? I'm Gordon. Who are you? I'm Sir Handel. Wouldn't it be interesting if the only way you could die was that suddenly your head blew up? 
If there were no other causes of death, everyone died the same way. Sooner or later, without warning, your head simply exploded. Gordon was speechless. But I'm used to new coaches, not these cattle cars. If you want to express emotion, screaming is where it's at, grunted Gordon. Yeah! He was still cross when they reached the top station. Sir Handel was hoping for a rest, but his driver thought otherwise. Grow up, motherfucker, said his driver. Let's get you back on the rail. When Sir Handel crawled home, he found Sir Topham Hatt waiting for him. I want you to know I don't automatically wash my hands every time I go to the bathroom. Can you deal with that? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You know when I wash my hands? When I shit on them. The station has a little shop selling refreshments. The conductor, fireman, and the guard buy tea and cakes from the refreshment lady. I think I'm going to go to the refreshment stand, buy myself a weenie, and hide it in my pants. Then I'm going to whip out the weenie and force her to watch while I eat the bun and stuff the weenie up my... Nah. She's probably one of them uptight chicks who think I'm weird. She doesn't know the problem is I'm shy. The conductor, fireman, and the guard buy tea and cakes from the refreshment lady. The refreshment lady was making her way to the train. Bake me a fucking loaf of bread, said Peter Sam. Couple of corn muffins, jelly donut, I don't give a shit. I'm in the market for quality baked goods. Stop! 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 wailed the coaches. You've left the refreshment lady behind. Oh, shit. Goddamn door is still wide open, groaned Peter Sam. We're sure to miss Henry now. Harold flew lower for a closer inspection. What the fuck is that? whizzed Harold. Don't recall seeing you before. What brings you this way? I want to see a paint factory blowing up, an oil refinery explode, and a tornado hit a church on Sunday. Well done. Cheers. And keep up the good work. Cheeky chopper, muttered Rusty. Peter Sam shut his eyes. The poor fuck. The poor stupid fuck. I'm sorry about your accident, said Sir Handel. Fuck you. Another day's rest will do you good, he said. Besides, I've got a surprise for you. For me, sir? How nice, sir. What is it, sir? I'm gonna have my testicles laminated. Later, Sir Topham Hatt spoke severely to Duncan. Listen to me. There is nothing wrong with that tunnel. You stuck in it because you tried to do rock and roll. Stop that. Stick to your faggoty polkas and waltzes and that repulsive country line dancing shit that you do. Get the fuck off the dance floor. Tunnels are not dance floors and you are not a pop star. If it happens again, he ended ominously, I'll beat the shit out of you. Need I say more? <laughs> Duncan thought Sir Topham Hatt had said quite enough. Sleepers in ballast, I'm off. And he was. Duncan has done it again. Come on, old boy, we'll have to get him out. The little diesel refused to move. Are you kidding? He's an asshole. Look, just five minutes, okay? Ah, uh, okay, five minutes. But no more. After that, I'm gonna puke. And Rusty roared into life. I'm ashamed of you, Rusty, said Scarlowy. Think of the passengers. What are they going to do? They should be killed and disposed of with a minimum of fuss. The other engines laughed, and Sir Handel sang a song about it. Rat shit, bat shit, dirty old twat. 69 assholes tied in a knot. Hooray, lizard shit, fuck! The teasing continued until at last the day came when his new funnel arrived. Sir Topham Hatt proudly presented it. Well, fuck, said Peter Sam. But Sir Topham Hatt laughed. Don't worry, Peter Sam. There's nothing wrong with a man who enjoys a good blowjob. You're just the engine to tackle George. Who's George? One more worthless cocksucker who makes his living on Wall Street, replied Scarloe. You swank around with your steamroller wheels, pretending you're as good as me. Actually, I'm better. 
Adios, motherfucker. George took no notice. There was barely room to pass. Attention, asshole, said Sir Handel. You drive like old people fuck. Slow and sloppy. I don't believe in road rage. I prefer the gentle rebuke. If I don't like the way someone is driving, I pull up alongside the other car and say, I hope your children turn out poorly. Hello, 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 said a policeman ominously. And what's going on here? Leave me alone, officer. I'm legally drunk. <laughs> now who's an old fuss pot? Laughed Nancy and set to work once more. Holy shit, look at the fucking knobs on her. Lick my asshole, you dim-witted prick! Sorry, not today. We must get the ice cream ready for the passengers. Never mind, Duncan. But Duncan did mind. I'm gonna kill the next motherfucker who pisses me off! Duncan wouldn't try. Fuck this shit, grumbled Duncan. We'll keep our passengers waiting, said his driver. Duncan was cross. I really don't care. My thoughts are on pussy. The passengers were furious. They told everyone what a bad railway it was. Listen, buddy, grumbled Duncan. Buy a fucking bicycle. Beep, beep. Good morning, Percy, he whistled. Driving is fun, isn't it? Did you ever run over a guy, huh? And then you panic, so you back up and run over him again? Did you ever notice the second crunch is not as loud as the first? Uh, yes, uh, Thomas, of course, but, uh, but what, Percy? Out with it. I think it's because the guy already has tread marks on him. Might as well run over him again. What are you going to do this time? Drive around him? Thomas was impatient. I'm so fucking impatient, said Thomas. At last, Thomas arrived. Sorry, can't talk. Diarrhea. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. The players shouted, but Stepney was still too far away for his driver and fireman to see or hear properly. They completely misunderstood. Don't get all excited and start rolling around causing trouble in your electric go-kart or whatever the fuck it is, said the driver. Calm down. The ball was nestled under some straw in the third car from the van. We found it, cried a player. Pick it up, asshole. You're lucky you found the fucking thing in the first place, said the driver. Put it in your pocket and go the fuck home. Everyone enjoyed watching the game. I don't care how rough it is, any time you're running around a field waving a stick, you're engaged in a faggoty college activity, said the driver. Period. Meanwhile, the inspector was looking for his hat. You just saw the fucking thing, said Sir Topham Hat. The workman gave him some cake. Please stop fucking with my desserts, said Henry unhappily. The elephant and his keeper were soon reunited, but Henry was most upset. The other day I was thinking of how many peanuts elephants owe us, grumbled Henry. Personally, I'm down about 23 or 24 bags. Oh! Well, Scruffy. Yeah! I'm coming apart! God, that shit hurts. Animals always run if you toot and look them in the eye. Even bulls? How the fuck should I know? What do you think I am, a fucking psychic? No one was hurt, but Thomas's front was badly bent. They telephoned to Sir Topham Hatt. I may not think it's such good news that no one was hurt, he said. I'm entitled to decide for myself whether or not injuries to strangers are good or bad news. I may prefer hearing, it's a shame no one was hurt. Remember, Thomas, called Gordon grandly. United we stand, together we fall. As far as I'm concerned, replied Thomas, united we're fucked. I think you are both sorry and deserve a treat. Edward will go in front to clear the line. Thomas will look after the coaches and Gordon run into a bakery and ask if they can bake a cake in the shape of a penis. When it was time to leave, the Queen spoke specially to Thomas, who fetched her coaches. This entire country is completely full of shit, and always has been, said Thomas. A man was shouting at Tom Tipper. You've got to come back to Sir Topham Hatt's office. He needs you to sign some important papers right away. Fine by me, replied Tom Tipper. But can I at least jerk off? I waited all day. 
Everyone came running to the scene. Tom Tipper's bicycle was in pieces. I used to pedal it around the neighborhood, hitting kids over the head with a big steel pipe. The fact that a lot of people actually like the music automatically means it sucks, rumbled Duncan. 